example, a three-phase transformer can be regarded as a balance to my load. So the three-phase transformer draws 5.6 kilowatts and the line voltage is 120 volts and the line current is 18.2 amperes. Determine the power factor of the motor. So we are given the total power given to 5.6 kilowatts and the line voltage of 120 the line current of 18.2 years. Now, we are given the tot total power, VL, then IL. So remember, we can uh, relate the total power, the total real power, by the line voltage and the line current. It is given by this equation. Pt is just equivalent to square root of 3, Vl, Il, cosine of theta. So where the cosine of theta is equivalent to the power factor. So given the values of Pt, Vl, and Il, we can get Pf. So Pf is just equivalent to we have 0 0.807. Next, calculate the line current required for a three-phase motor having a power factor of 0.85. So this is still connected to the to this 120 line voltage. Same with the balanced three-phase transformer. A balanced three-phase motor can be regarded as a balanced to a load. For the next example, we have the total power of the motor is equivalent to 30 kilowatts and then power factor is 0 0.85 we have VL that's equivalent to 220 volts so using the same equation we can solve directly for the IL so IL is just equivalent to PT over root of 3 VL cosine theta. We have 92.62 amperes. Next example, we have a line impedance of 1 plus J.6 feeds, feeds two three phase loads connected in parallel. So we have load 1. So remember these are three phase loads. Load one we have 750 kilowatts and 850 kV inductive. And load two is Y connected with 16 minus J5 impedance per phase. So the line to neutral voltage at the load side is 5000 VRMS. What is the magnitude of the line voltage at the source side? So to better solve this problem, we we'll need to construct a, a circuit or a diagram. The problem states that a line with impedance 1 plus K.6 feeds two three-phase loads connected in parallel. We have a line. Impedance of 1 plus 0.6. So two loads are connected in parallel. So load 1 is 350 kilowatts and 850 kV inductive. And load 2 is a Y connected load with 16 minus J5 impedance per phase. So both of these loads are balanced. So we can use the per phase analysis. This is load 1. And this is 
Auto. Let's consider phase A. This A is N. So remember, if we are using the per phase analysis, all values should be in phase values. Or you convert this system into Y. Y system. So this is IAA. So load one per phase. We have 750 kilowatts is the total power. So the per phase power is 750 kilowatts divided by 3, which is 250 kilowatts. The reactive power per phase is 850 divided by 3. We have 283.33 A bar. So this is an inductive load. So for load 2, we are given the uh, ZY per phase. So 16 minus 35 ohms. So next given is the line to neutral voltage. The load side is 5000 VRMS. So where is this 5000 VRMS located? So if this is the source side, this is the source side. Yeah, VAN. This is the line. So right after the line is the load side. This right here. So five thousand VRMS located here in between line A and the neutral at the load side. We are to find the magnitude of the line voltage at the source side. So before we can get the magnitude of the line voltage at the source side, so we need to get this value right here. VAN. How do we get the VAN? If you look at the figure, we are given this voltage right here, 5000. This uh, impedance right here. So what is missing is the current IAA or the line current IAA. To get the current IAA, we need the currents at line 1. Let's label this as I1. I mean at load 1. The current at load 2. So how do we get I1 and I2? Now if we take a look at load 1, we are given real power and reactive power. So from this given, we can get the um, complex power per phase. We have 250 and then it says that it is an inductive load so plus K 283.33 AVA. So using this value and this value, the voltage, you can now get the current I1. So if you remember, S per phase is just equivalent to V phase times the conjugate of I phase. If we let VAN our reference, we have 5000 angle 0 volts. We have I1 just equivalent to 250 plus 
283.33 J all over 5000 angle 0 get the conjugate this is equivalent to Twenty five point fifty seven angle of negative forty eight point fifty eight. We have now current I one. Now for I two for I one. For I two. We are given the Z, Z wiper phase, and then we have the voltage. So solving for I2, we have 5000 angle 0 over 10 minus 3, 5, 198.5. Twenty seven angle of seventeen point thirty five years. So we have now our A2. Okay, so CL at node A, we cannot get the value of IAA. Okay, so CL at A, IAA is equivalent to I1 plus I2. Is equivalent to 336.25 angle of 5.51 degrees years. Now, having IAA, we can now solve for VAN by using by applying KVL this loop. One so KVL at one we have VAN as equivalent to so if we assign the voltage to positive negative right here, VAN is as equivalent to IAA times one plus K zero point six plus 5,000 angle 0 we have 5,120.42 angle of 2.31 is volts since we have the base voltage we cannot get the uh, line voltage. The line voltage, magnitude of the line voltage, is equivalent to square root of 3 times the magnitude of the phase voltage, which is square root of 3 times this magnitude right here, is equivalent to 9,110.4 volts. Now we have our final answer.